This is the land of Havilah, Mark 6b. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus sent the twelve out in groups of two to cast out demons, heal every sickness and disease, and preach the good news of the kingdom. Coming up, they're returning, verse 30. The apostles gathered themselves together to Jesus, and they told him all things, whatever they had done and whatever they had taught. Comment, the disciples must have had some interesting stories to tell, but we won't be getting any of the details. We just know they were generally successful, as verses 12 and 13 already said, quote, they went out and preached that people should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many with oil who were sick and healed them, end quote. And, quote, they went throughout the villages preaching the good news and healing everywhere, Luke 9, 6. There was a constant stream of people coming and going around Jesus because he said, verse 31, He said to them, You come apart to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Comment, when the disciples returned from touring the villages, they probably rendezvoused back at Capernaum by the sea, because, verse 32, they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Comment, speaking of the crowds, verse 33, they saw them going, and many recognized him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. Comment, the Sea of Galilee is seven miles east to west and 12 miles north to south. So on a clear day, Especially if someone might have been observing from the surrounding hills, they might have been able to watch the boat. However the crowd did it, some of them figured out where he was about to land, and they were waiting for them when they landed in that so-called deserted place. Quote, they arrived before them, end quote. Speaking of Jesus coming out of the boat, verse 34. Jesus came out, saw a great multitude, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it was late in the day, his disciples came to him and said, This place is deserted, and it's late in the day. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They asked him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Comment, a denarius is a day's wage. It would cost 200 days wages to buy enough bread for all that crowd because there were 5,000 men in addition to women and children, Matthew 15, 38. Since so many traveled to a deserted place so urgently that they didn't take any food with them, there's no telling how many were trying to come to him when he was at home in Capernaum. On a side note, someone might take offense that they didn't count the women and children, but in that culture it might have been an offense if women and children were counted. To put a number on them might have seemed a breach of etiquette. A census in Old Testament Israel was always of military-aged men only, and then only by the command of God, Numbers 1, 2, and 3, Numbers 26, 2, and 1 Chronicles 21, 2 through 4. It was late in the day, the crowds had no food, and verse 38. He said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go see. When they knew, they said, Five and two fish. He commanded them that everyone should sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. Comment, Jesus had commanded his disciples, quote, make them sit down in groups of about fifty each, Luke 9, 14. So what's Jesus going to do with five loaves and two fish, verse 41? He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves, and he gave to his disciples to set before them, and he divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and also of the fish. Those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Comment in verse 41, also in Matthew 14, 19, and Luke 9, 16, Jesus looked up to heaven when he blessed the loaves and the fish. This posture indicated to the crowd that he was giving credit to the Father for what was about to happen. He always shifted the credit, John 5.30 and John 8.54. It was also a posture as opposed to bowing his head, which indicated he had nothing of which to be ashamed. He was without sin, Hebrews 4.15. 
There was a similar miracle in the Old Testament that during a famine, God sent Elijah to a certain widow. She had a handful of meal in a jar and a little jar of oil. She was about to make a final cake for herself and her son, a little loaf to eat, and then die. But Elijah told her the jar of meal will not run out and the jar of oil will not fail until the day that Yahweh sends rain on the earth, 1 Kings 17, 14, and they didn't fail. When Abraham went by the command of God to a mountain to sacrifice his son Isaac, and God provided a ram at the last moment to substitute for Isaac, Abraham called that mountain by the name Yahweh will provide. Afterward, it became a saying in Israel, on Yahweh's mountain it will be provided, Genesis 22:14 meaning God will come through even if he waits till the last second. Jesus came through for that crowd of 5,000 because they were following him. If we follow Christ, we'll lack nothing. Quote, Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Psalm 23, 1. But if we leave the shepherd, we shouldn't be surprised if there are going to be problems. In verses 42 and 43, they were filled and took up more leftovers than what they started with. Some have suggested that this wasn't a miracle, that when Jesus shared what little he had, it inspired the crowds to do the same, to pull out hidden loaves from among their belongings and share with everyone. But that wasn't the disciples' understanding of the situation. They said in verse 36, they have nothing to eat, end quote. And if Jesus wasn't doing miracles, there wouldn't have been a crowd there in the first place. When we take the miracles out of the Bible, there's nothing left. As Jesus said to his own disciples, quote, Foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Luke 14, 25. Verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and to go ahead to the other side to Bethsaida while he himself sent the multitude away. Comment, the location of Bethsaida is unknown other than being on the Sea of Galilee, probably the North Shore. It was the hometown of Peter, Andrew, and Philip, John 1, In verse 45, Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go to Bethsaida, but he stayed behind and sent the multitude away. In verse 46, after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. When evening had come, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Comment, the boat was in the middle of the sea at night, but Jesus was alone on the land. He must have had a supernatural vision of them in the boat because, verse 48, seeing them distressed in rowing, for the wind was contrary to them, about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea, and he would have passed by them, but they, when they saw him walking on the sea, supposed that it was a ghost and cried out. Comment, on this occasion they weren't panicked by the wind and waves, But there was enough wind that they were having a difficult time rowing against it. They were, quote, distressed in rowing, end quote. The panic and crying out came from seeing him walking on the water and thinking he was a ghost. Verse 50, For they all saw him and were troubled. But he immediately spoke with them and said to them, Cheer up, it is I, don't be afraid. Comment, He would have passed by, but they cried out in panic. It wasn't a cry of faith, but he answered the cry anyway. Verse 51. He got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were very amazed among themselves and marveled, for they hadn't understood about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Comment, for they hadn't understood what about the loaves. They didn't understand that they shouldn't be afraid of anything. They saw Jesus, thought he was a ghost, and were afraid, but they didn't understand there's never anything to be afraid of. God always has everything under control. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, quote, nothing will in any way hurt you, end quote. This was the lesson of the loaves that they didn't understand. God will supply whatever it is, food, protection from spirits, whatever. He's willing, he's able, he's on the job, he's aware of every threat before we know about it, nothing surprises him, and it will come through. So we should live confidently. Panic is a lack of faith. Worry is a lack of faith. Pessimism is a lack of faith. Fatalism is a lack of faith. Negativity is a lack of faith. 
we should remember the lesson of the loaves. Verse 53. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. Come, they left from Bethsaida and landed at Gennesaret, which was on the northwest shore near Capernaum. Verse 54. When they had come out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran around that whole region and began to bring those who were sick on their mats to where they heard he was. Wherever he entered, into villages or into cities or into the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched him were made well. Comment Mark 7's next at landofhavilah.net, Mark 7.